Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be the next hockey video on the Seattle Kraken, the NHL's new team, their season preview as we preview them coming into the NHL this season. Congratulations to Seattle fans on getting your hockey franchise out there. Obviously, in these videos and the other videos, I talk about the prospect pool and the minor league core of the team, as well as the um, pros core in the NHL. Obviously, the Kraken only have a couple guys that were selected, like the great Matty Beneers of the world in this year's draft, who I think will be a very pivotal center for you guys going forward in the future. They also got an interesting player in Cole Lind, who obviously um, has experience and came over from Vancouver in the AHL level and plays very good down there, potently on offense, but hasn't been able to really figure it out at the NHL level. So maybe he'll be one of those players like Vegas found players that really kind of turned on the Jets once they got them in their team and in a new experience and a way to kind of just be known that they're going to be in the top nine or the top six or the top 12 every night so they know that they're going to be, get playing time. Maybe he'll be one of those guys that's able to kind of take off for them and actually do pretty well. They've, of course, picked Riker Evans um, in last year's draft as well, the good defenseman, 35 overall, who's a good two-way blue liner that will develop in the future. And then Ryan Whit Witterton, who I always mispronounce his name, is Wh Wisterston for some reason. But Witterton um, is the heavy shooting workhorse center. So it seems like you might have two centers there. Matty Beneer seems like a definite. Uh, Witterton is more of a let's see as he develops. But he's definitely a smart player, a heavy shooting defense, or not a defenseman, a heavy shooting um, center and a defensive ace. So when you hear about that scouting report, that kind of reminds me of Philippe Deneau. So I think that's obviously a very good comparison to have. Somebody that just really knows how to play defense and really knows how to play it well. Or even somebody like they have on their team who at least be to the level maybe defensively how Wenberg plays pretty good defense or somebody like that. But I feel like when you read his scouting report, that sounds a lot more to the level of like Deneau being one of the better defensive centers in the league. So you might have one of the better creative centers in the league that can do it all in Matty Beneers. And you, because some people compared that boy to Braden Point, so that's obviously a very good guy to have. And then you might have a guy that's a very good center in the future as well that's more like Deneau and Witterton. Plus, you got Cole Lynn, who's the wild card. How's he develop? You got Riker Evans, who looks like he'll be a, two, a good two way blue liner in the future, only 19 now. And you also have Alexander True, who was able to play some in San Jose last year at center. And actually play fairly well. So maybe he'll be a guy that comes in and shows more there. A player I do love, though, as we move to the Major League roster for the Kraken is, well, one, Jared McCann, I always think, is just a good player to have on your team. Unfortunately, he, Marcus Johansson, Callie Yonkrog, Jonas Dornskoy, and Jamie Alexiak are all in the COVID protocol right now. But when they all come back, this team picked a good team. Jaden Schwartz is an experienced player that's been in a winning culture in St. Louis. Jared McCain is an experienced player that's just entering his prime age at 25. Jordan Eberle is a very experienced player that's been in multiple um, good environments, especially in that Islanders environment. That's a very good culture. So he's on the team to add experience, and he's also ready to go. He's not in the protocol. Marcus Johansson's a solid veteran. You would hope you can get more offense from him. We've seen it a couple years back, not so much of late. Alexander Renberg, though, he's kind of that center you look like the William Carlson's that he really took off when he went to Vegas. He's kind of that guy that's never been able to find it but really has been a solid, like never been able to fully find it, I should say. He's been a good player in his career. But when he got picked, they definitely thought in Columbus he would be more than what he became, and that's kind of why he's got pushed on and moved on. He was the 14th pick for a reason. So maybe he'll find some of that pizzazz, some of the reason why he was the 14th pick in Seattle and kind of get the jump start there. And then Callie Yonkroak is one of the more underrated players in the NHL. He just plays a good two-way game, adds you about 13 to like 17 goals probably in a season. So he's pretty good there as well. And then you got Don Scoy, who also plays a great two-way game, adds you more of the 17 to 20. He has the potential to score. Uh, Ryan Donato's a nice fast player that can shoot a little bit, but he's more of an AHL. We'll have to see if he's a guy that can surprise and develop well there out there because he's another guy that really when he got drafted obviously they expected a little bit more from him out there in Boston they weren't able to get that from their second round pick 
but maybe he can find something there. Morgan Geeky is a very nice pick, not even at his full prime age yet. He's only 23. So if he can develop as a center too, and you have McCann, you got Wenberg, you got nice young centers. The only center that's about to enter 30 on this team is Riley Sheehan, who's just a nice fourth line center. So you don't really have to worry about that. And then Mason Appleton is a center and right winger that can play both and plays both really well and is probably one of their better picks because he seems like he's one of those players that was progressing really well and shooting up last year. So he seems like he is one of those guys that can really take the next step, getting more opportunities, being in more of a steady basis, getting probably more power play opportunities even with the Seattle Kraken to kind of showcase his full ability. And then obviously on defense, as we wrap up this video of the defense and goaltending, which boy, I, I'm a huge goaltender guy. I love their goaltending. But we'll go to defense. Mark Giordano is obviously a very good experienced defenseman. Hell, he won the, I must have the best enough. He won the Norris Trophy at a very, 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 very unexpected age just a few years back. Jamie Alexiak is a very good late-blooming defensive defenseman. Adam Larson is also a defensive defenseman. It'll be interesting since they have them paired in the projections on the same line how that works out. I feel like that might change, but both of those guys are good. Carson Soucy is a very underrated defenseman. This dude was one of the best plus-minus guys, one of the better-graded defensive guys, plus 22 last year. Just knows how to play the game. Can also pot you about 16 to 20 assists. Um, he had 16 last year, so he's a good guy to have. Hayden Flurry is one of those guys you wonder, will he be able to kind of take the next step and get going? Um, he never really showcased his full plethora of ability when he was in Carolina, but you started seeing a little bit more of the spunk and the kind of the tenacity he could play at with his body and frame when he went to the Ducks for the short time at the end of last season. Since he obviously got more opportunity there, you would think that would be similar to what he would get in Seattle, being the, the expansion team that probably could give him a shot. You also brought in Nathan Bastion, who I got the privilege of watching in the AHL covering the Phantom when he played for then. It was the Binghampton Devils. But uh, he's a good big boy that can kind of protect in front of the net well on defense and also be a good net front presence on offense. Jeremy Luzon played very solid for the Bruins, a solid defensive defenseman who's developing. Then you brought in Dennis Shalowski, um from the, uh, what's it called, Detroit Red Wings, who's also just seems like he's so developing slower than expected, but still looks like he can be a solid, at least third-pairing defenseman. So you have good defensive people. you got solid offensive people at the top. It's going to be interesting how the bottom two lines produce offensively, but you do got Schwartz, who I think will go back to being more of in the teens, at least, goal scoring, maybe even 20 with this team. Everly, I think, is going to have a great season. Jared McCann, I think, is going to have a great season for this team. Wenberg, I do think. I predict him to actually have that breakout year for this team. Uh, Yarn Croak, then, is another guy that you see. I feel like he'll have a, the most points he's probably ever had in his career just because of the opportunities he's getting. And then Appleton, like I said, will do well, too. So you're going to have enough offense. You actually have a very solid put-together defense with the depth of Shalowski and Luzon. So that's why I think the hockey news predicts them at 6 in the Pacific. I think that could be low because I think the Pacific Division is just really going to be a battle of who's able to surpass each other. Like the top team is likely, obviously, to be the Edmonton Oilers, again, just from projections going into the season when you look at a lot of this. But if you look at the rest of the Pacific Division, they're going to be better than the Ducks. They could be better than the Canucks. They should be better than the Sharks. So that's already <clears throat> above six. And then they could be better than the Kings and Flames. Those are the teams that everybody's trying to see what all those teams are, including this Kraken team. But if you look at the overall roster and everything, this Kraken team has as good of a team to compete and say, well, they can be as good or better than the Kings and Flames. And then all those other teams, I think they definitely could be better than. And then the Golden Knights and Oilers are going to battle it out for the top, the other NHL's newest team. So I do think this team has a chance to make it. And to wrap up this video, that's because they got two very good guys in net. A late emerging Chris Dreger, who was great in Florida, looked like he was going to be the starting goalie. And then they just say, hey, what the hell, we feel Brubauer is available. Let's get him because he was a guy competing for the Vezina in Colorado. Yes, they had a very fluent and put together defense. But like I just said, I think this team honestly has a very nice defense that's going to show up and show out, especially when everybody's in on the offense as well, that contributes big to the defense, like the McCanns of the world, the Yarncrokes and the Donskoys 
and the, and even Johansson a little bit, but more so these other three from the COVID protocol. I think this team's going to have a good team and have as good of a chance as any as those other teams kind of in that mixed group that it's hard to predict in the Pacific who will make the playoffs other than if you're the Edmonton Oilers or if you're the um, Golden Knights. So I think they're going to be right in that mix with all those other teams there and have a chance to make it. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I love their goaltending. I think their goaltending is going to show up and show out. Dreger's going to be one of the best backups in the league. This team can definitely win the trophy for the best goaltenders in the league, the William Jennings, and I think they definitely will have a chance to do that. I hope you all enjoyed this video. This has been the Seattle Kraken Season Preview. If you enjoyed the content, please subscribe down below or on the widget up above. Have a great day, pleasant day, everybody, and go Kraken. Enjoy your first season in the NHL Seattle. The season is upon us starting tomorrow. Peace out, everybody.